Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and today we are unboxing the Logitech Brio. Alright everyone, so this is not a very good setup for an unboxing, but I have been very busy this week and I will continue to be busy next week because I am getting ready for the Nerd in the Street Extra Life 2018 Telethon. This is our annual live stream that we do raising money for the St. Louis Children's Hospital. We are streaming on November 3rd and 4th this year, starting 6.30 a.m. Central Time next Saturday and then we'll be going until 8.30 on Sunday. It's a total of 27 hours because Daylight Saving Time is also ending that night. So it's going to be a huge stream. I've got other things in my room like this game show wheel here that I'm acquiring for the stream, but one of the things I picked up this year was a Logitech Brio webcam. I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the B&H box. I'm just going to open up my knife here real quick. All right, I have a packing slip here, and we've got some bubble wrap in this box here, and inside of that bubble wrap we've got the Brio. I'm trying to get it out of the box here so I can hold it while I talk about it. Uh, so for those of you not aware, the Brio is Logitech's latest webcam. It is their latest and greatest. It was released in 2017, and the prior major model of their webcam before this one was the C920, which is the webcam I already had. Now the reason I'm picking up this webcam this year for Extra Life is because we've got a new cast for Extra Life this year, a lot of new people coming in, and a lot of the old people who have done Extra Life with me in the past are not coming back this year. So normally what I do for Extra Life is I just ask everyone who's coming to bring their own webcams, but since all the people with webcams have left and are not doing the stream anymore, I will need to provide all the webcams. So I've got my C920, I've got a C525 from years ago that we'll be using, and I've also got this brand new Brio. Now the Brio is a big step up from the C920 because it's actually a 4K webcam, you can see written there. And this camera actually has two names. This is sometimes called the Logitech Brio, and sometimes it's just called the Logitech 4K Pro Webcam. The only difference between those two things is the name. Uh, the model number is also technically different, but all the electronics inside are exactly the same. It is the same camera. They call it the Brio when you're purchasing it for a business, and they call it the 4K Pro Webcam when you're purchasing it from Logitech directly for a consumer. Now I picked this up from B&H Photo Video. I don't have a business account with them actually. One of the few websites I don't have a business account with. But they still sell it as the Brio and it comes in this package that is uh, less flashy than, than you would see at a Best Buy or something if you got the 4K Pro webcam. Since the Brio is for business, they just throw it in a, a brown box. So you can see the front here, there's just an outline. Top of the box we got the Logitech logo or word mark, the, the new flatter one. Uh, on the right side of the box, we got some information about imports and things. Um, on the other side, we've got links to download the camera software. On the bottom here, we've got FCC information and some more uh, model numbers and things. And that's just about everything there is on this thing. On the back, we've got warranty stuff and we've got operating system support. Now, I did look up before I purchased this. The back of this thing says Mac and Windows 10 compatible and Windows 8 compatible. Uh, but it doesn't say anything about Linux, however, this thing does work in Linux. Just like the C920, there are some settings you need to change to get it to work well in Linux, but it should work just fine in Linux. And even though, by the way, we're still streaming in 720p for our stream and we're recording in 1080p, uh, but since this is a 4K webcam, that opens up possibilities for us. We can zoom in or crop the shot a little bit more without losing resolution. And it should just be a better quality sensor overall. I'm especially excited because it's got almost HDR support. Um, it's apparently way better at handling. You know, if I turn on my light back here, just this lamp here, um, that's a really bright light back there. Now right now I'm recording with a Panasonic Lumix FZ1000 camera, and this camera is a very good camera, so you're still able to see my face even though there's that really bright light back there. I will turn it off so that things look better. But my C920, if there's a bright light in the background, then it kind of washes your face out in the foreground, or it makes your face really dark or really light. Just with extremes of lighting, uh, that's where webcams kind of start to break down and you need professional cameras like my Lumix here. Well, my Lumix is barely a professional camera. 
but you need um, real cameras rather than webcams. But this thing is apparently a big step up from the C920 that I had before. So I am excited to see uh, how it works. I will plug it in and you guys will see a little bit of sample footage by the end of this video. Sorry, I know this is really long-winded for an unboxing. This isn't something I would normally necessarily even do an unboxing on anymore. I did want to let you guys all know about the Extra Life stream that we're doing though. I might or might not make a separate Extra Life announcement video depending on how many views this one gets, but definitely tune in live.knots.co. It'll also be streaming uh, to youtube.com slash nerd of the street if you're watching on YouTube, but I'd prefer you watch at nerdofthestreet.com or at live.knots.co. We're also streaming to Twitch, Mixer, Smashcasts. All right, so we open up the box here. Here, uh, Here's the unboxing part of the unboxing. All right, so I cut the seals. Uh, we're opening up the box. And on top here, there is a link to download software, which is not available for Linux, so we will not be downloading that. Then below that, we've got the camera itself sitting in sort of a black case. Wanna make sure I don't throw it out here, but uh, comparing this thing to my C920, if I can grab that and just bring this up here. So here's the C920 that I have already, and here's the new Brio. Uh, so a little bit, maybe a tiny bit wider. The sensor in the middle isn't um, it isn't too different. It looks about the same size, maybe a little bigger, the, you know, the lens itself in the middle and the sensor would be below that. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, give you a comparison of those. Um, as you can see, my C920 is currently on a tripod head and the stand of the C920 is what goes onto the tripod head. The Brio is actually a bit different. The stand that it comes with is screwed onto the tripod thread. But if you do want to put this thing on a tripod, the stand itself comes off. So that actually gives you a little less flexibility um, for adjusting things once it's on a tripod. But here's the camera. So I am pulling this out of here right now. It's awkward doing an unboxing standing up, but this is my setup right now. All right, so here's the camera. Like I was saying, the bottom here is a stand and we can... Hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking plastic off of this thing, I guess. So on the front here, we've got plastic covering the part that the lens is on. Uh, on the bottom, we do have a stand that it comes with, so you can put this thing on top of a laptop or a computer monitor if you want to. So we're peeling the plastic off of here, if we can. Plastic's not really, all right, well, it didn't really unwrap, but we got the plastic off of there. Here's the stand, so, you know, you, you tilt this whichever way you want it to point. Um, it can hang off of a monitor here, or, you know, you set it. You just kind of move these arms around until it's sitting where you want it to. This is very similar to the C920 stand, actually. You can set it down on a table and have it point kind of up like that or, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, this thing does feel pretty solid for, for a webcam. I'm not sure if this is metal, if the, uh, the casing of this thing, I think it's plastic. Uh, I do want to figure out how to remove this stand though because there's actually plastic around this ring here and I can't take that off before we take this stand off so let me go ahead and we'll see if anything else is in the box here um, it feels like there's still more in the box if we pull this plastic uh, this is upside down if we pull this plastic out of here okay so there's a little well, obviously I guess there, there hasn't been a cord yet um, so there's a bit sticking out here on the back of this tray, some cardboard there hanging onto it. Um, bit sticking out that the stand was in in the box. Underneath here, we've got cardboard that we will pull up just like that. And now the box is definitely empty. So I'll set that down. And here is everything else we pulled out. There's a square in the middle that nothing's really behind. And we can slide everything out of here. So, so this thing's empty now too. We've got some documentation, which is good. Uh, Brio 4K webcam setup guide. Basically just says plug in and you can see it there kind of trying to tell you how to take that stand off the bottom of it like I was just talking about. Uh, we do have safety information for your webcam as well as warranty information. There are two of these, I don't know. I'm not reading those right now. Um, there is a cover for the webcam. I think it's really interesting they've started doing this. Um, obviously, when I got my older webcams, I've got them sitting right off screen, but the C920 that I just showed you and the C525, there's a light on the webcam that shows you if it's on or not, and most of the time, I can trust that light, especially when it's like an external Logitech webcam and I'm using Linux on my computer. If you're on Windows, theoretically, there might be a way that somebody could hack your webcam and 
I mean, the light's kind of tied in with the webcam's firmware, so really, generally I trust the light. If the light is off, I assume that the webcam is not being accessed. But if you're somebody who is worried about somebody hacking your webcam and, you know, if you keep your computer in your bedroom, you know, I've got this green screen separating the rest of my bedroom off from my office, but if you uh, happen to be putting your webcam in places you wouldn't always want it to be able to see, the newer Logitech webcams actually come with a physical cover. So you just set this right up on top. Uh, it snaps right on there. Here, let me do that again. It is perfectly fitted, so it works very well. You just pop that on there and now slide it so it's centered and we've got this cover here so webcam can see you webcam can no longer see you so if you're an old school person and you don't trust the light and honestly like I am in support of this I think this is actually great it's a great idea I don't know why it necessarily took them so long to come up with that but now that they have it um, I definitely like I'll probably keep this on there just because sometimes I do not like having a webcam pointed at me even if I'm just sitting at my desk not doing anything special but especially if you're somebody who doesn't necessarily trust your computer all the time um, and if you are running an insecure operating system such as Windows where you might have to worry about malware a little bit more or you're using proprietary software like Google Chrome that you don't know what it's doing uh, it could be accessing your web cam at any point so yeah physical cover um i support it great idea i am gonna take that off of there just for the uh, i'll i'll leave it on i guess actually i'll have to see and make sure it doesn't affect lighting in any way but i i might as well oh actually i'll need to take it off to take the rest of this plastic off the camera i am realizing now i am gonna set the webcam down for a moment though and here what we have is a usb cable this is a usb 3.0 webcam I believe you can use it with a USB 2.0 port if you're using it in 720p or 1080p mode, but if you are trying to use 4K, you are going to need a USB 3.0 port for the bandwidth that it provides. And we've got a, a Velcro tie here that I just undid to unravel this USB cord. This is a pretty darn long USB cord. Um, I guess it's about as long as the ones that were built into my other webcams, but this is really nice. This is really nice. If I grab my C920 again, you'll notice here on the C920 on the back of it, uh, the, the cord goes straight into the camera and that's it. This does not come out in any way. This is stuck in there. So you get the cord that it comes with and that's it. And I've actually purchased several non-powered USB extension cords. USB can go about 15 feet before you need powered repeaters to start extending it. And the webcams don't work with those powered repeaters in my experience. Um, but yeah, with the C920 and all the previous models, you did get a cord that was just stuck in the webcam, which is a little inconvenient. You know, just when I pack the thing up and I'm not using it, I'm putting it back on my monitor here. You know, when I want to put it in its box for a while, I just kind of have to awkward the wrap the cable around the camera which I'm doesn't feel like it's great for it uh, the Brio it comes with this USB cord here which it's it's actually a really thick cord it's thicker I don't know if you can tell but that's probably like a third thicker than the cords that were on the back of my previous Logitech webcams and in addition to being thicker and higher quality cords and that's probably partially because it's USB 3.0 as well that it's thicker uh, but if you look in the back here, the Brio, there is just a USB. This is a Type-C, actually, port. So it's USB 3.0 Type-A to USB 3.0 Type-C, and the Type-C just plugs right in here. But theoretically, you should be able to plug any USB Type-C cord into this webcam as long as it's a, a compliant cable. So, like, my OnePlus phone has a USB Type-C cable. Now, I think that's actually a USB 2.0. Uh, this would need to be a 3.0 to work with everything on this camera. But, but yeah, this just plugs in right here doesn't go in all the way there you can see um, and it is a little bit wobbly not super wobbly as long as it can sit on a tripod and I can string this cord out uh, which you can see like that's fine that's perfectly that holds on enough for my purposes all right I am gonna unplug that we've got one more thing that came in the box here this right here is this a carrying case I've never had a webcam come with a carrying case before once again this is a nicer webcam it's not just newer than the older models, but it's actually built a bit nicer than them. Uh, and yes, this does look like this is a drawstring bag. We've got a Logitech logo sort of lightly imprinted in the middle there. Uh, this is kind of, it, it's a cheap felt, but it is a felt-like material. And yeah, you can toss your webcam in here. Oh, there's actually a separator, so you can put the webcam on one side of here, put the cable on the other side so that your lens doesn't get scratched up. Uh, we're gonna you can just drop the camera in there. I'm 
trying to do the best I can here with uh, a standing up unboxing. You drop the camera in there, drawstring bag, closes from one side only. Okay, alright, so you pull one of these. Okay, I see how this bag works. Alright, this drawstring has one of these things that you slide down to tighten it. This is kind of an awkward setup here. Normally you would have uh, one of these on either side of the bag, and not just one, but I'm not going to complain about a free bag. Honestly, I do carry my webcam around a lot. I think a lot of people who use these cheaper webcams, you know, if you're in a TV broadcast studio where your cameras are always in the same spot, your DSLRs or your more expensive broadcast cameras are going to be sitting on their tripods 24-7, but I think people who use these kinds of webcams, especially these higher end ones who are more into streaming but they're still using webcams and not professional cameras they're very likely to be taking these things to friends houses or you know taking them around and traveling with them to stream from different locations so this is actually a great idea because my other webcams like I said normally I just kinda I wrap the cord around it and then I just stick it in a box somewhere and I just kinda hope that it, that it doesn't get too scratched up uh, but this is actually a much nicer way to store it. So that's very cool. All right, now finally, I'm going to take the camera back out of the bag. And the last thing I want to do is figure out how to take this bottom piece off. Do we just pull it straight off? I thought we would have to twist. I don't want to break this thing. What's the trick to this? The setup guide just kind of has an arrow pointing away from the camera. Like, you can just pop it straight off. But that doesn't really seem to be what's happening. Oh, yeah, no, it actually is like that. All right, so I've got the camera here. I'm holding it upside down. You literally do just pull this up, and it's coming out of there. I can see it's starting to come up. You can see some, uh, some distance between the stand and the camera there. Really having to uh, pull quite hard here, but it's... If I wiggle it a bit there, it's getting there. I don't know why they didn't just ship the camera separately from this so that you screw it on to begin with, or pop it in, or whatever you're supposed to do. Okay, yeah, you just pull. Um, so see, I wasn't sure if this was threaded on like a tripod thread. You can see here on the bottom of the camera itself, so now I can put the camera, just the camera, on a tripod head. Now, I actually kind of liked the fact that on my C920, the stand was what screwed onto the tripod head, because that way you can put it on the tripod and then you can even adjust it more on top of the tripod. You know, tripod heads are something that people sell as accessories just as a standalone thing, so I didn't think it hurt having the stand with the webcam on top of the tripod, but with the new version here, uh, you just screw this camera directly onto your tripod head with your tripod mount using the uh, standard thread there at the bottom. It is a screw-on thread, as you can see, uh, but there are two notches that is not part of the standard thread with a normal camera or like my C920, this thread goes all the way around, but there are two notches here, one on each side, and the bottom of our included camera stand right here, it just has those notches on it. Uh, it does not have any threads. So you just pop this straight on and straight off. When you want to attach this, you just push it on, and then when you want to detach it, you take it right back off. I don't want to put it on and off a bunch right now. There is one little groove there. This is a really weird, this is not the normal, um, this is not a standard setup for, for cameras or anything, but that is how that works in case anyone was curious. So yeah, just pull this thing straight off, kind of wiggle it and round until it comes off. And now we can take off the last bit of plastic here to end our unboxing, because that's all that unboxings really are anyway, is taking plastic off of things. Just trying to get this little bit of plastic up. There we go. Okay. So we'll peel that all the way around. Beautiful. Okay, so now we've got nice glossy everywhere. It's great. Okay, and at this point I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing into my desktop and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, we are recording in OBS right now and you guys will have to excuse everything going on around me here. Uh, we are recording with the Brio right now and I've also got my other two webcams in OBS. Now let me try and open up as you can see, we're kind of out of focus right now. I can make the Brio. The Brio wants to focus super up close to it. If I come back here, the Brio is on top of my, my monitor right now. So for some reason, it doesn't want to focus on my face automatically. Yeah, it's not, not wanting to focus. Might have something to do with these lights, actually. If I turn those off, does anything get better? With the focus? No. Okay. Hang on just a second, everyone. Let me open up my 
settings program for these USB cameras. All right, there's a program called V4L2 Test Bench. It lets you adjust the hardware settings on Video for Linux devices, which all of the Logitech webcams are recognized under Linux as Video for Linux devices. So let me go ahead and find open device. So I've got... Oh, hey, we focused while I was trying to work on that. Okay, so it finally woke up and decided to focus. Um, I do have some controls still, as you can see, for uh, brightness and contrast. I'm going to I'm going to set this back to the default. Right now, we're on auto white balance. Uh, my program here does let me adjust the white balance manually and things like that, but obviously it looks best on auto right now. So this is what the Logitech Brio looks like. Um, I'm pretty impressed so far. Now, I've also got, like I said, I've got my Logitech C920 1080p webcam here, and then I've also got my 720p C525. You can see this one obviously looks the worst. Now, if I open up my uh, C525 here in the Video for Linux test bench, if I disable the auto white balance and force it to do something, all right, so that, that looks a little bit better than the red it tries to force it to. We can play with our lighting here. You can change our, okay, yeah, you can change your exposure and stuff in the video for Linux test bench as well. So this is the this is the 525. This is a 720p webcam. You can actually also see, I'm gonna go ahead and try not to, I, I'm not gonna change the sync every time I move between cameras here. Um, this is the 720p webcam. Switching to the 1080p C920, you can see a little bit less lag um, and obviously much less grainy since it's higher resolution. And you can see each one of these cameras also has a wider angle lens. Here's the Brio again, brand new Brio. Look how much more space there is. So my C920, they are, my cameras are next to each other. I've got the C920, the Brio, and then the, the 525 up here from left to right. So they're not all in the exact same position, but you can see the C920 goes from my wall back here, and it goes up to just past the head of this lamp. Now when I switch to the Brio, notice, you can see more of this paper towel roll down here. So we're, we're even going further to the left, even though the camera is sitting more to the right, you can see further to the left on the Brio. And you can also see way further on the right side. Um, you can see all of the, the light bulbs almost, or the light bulb covers on that lamp there. And you can, you can, see, you can see my freaking door way over there past the green screen. Whereas the C920, you can see I had it set up so that it was all blocked. So the Brio does have a much wider angle lens, which is a good thing sometimes because you can have the camera closer to you and uh, you can still see more even if the camera is closer to you. Now, sometimes you do want to be a little more zoomed in. And in that case, if I come into my video for Linux test bench here and if we go into our camera controls, we can zoom in here. All right. So obviously if we zoom in a ton, it is going to be grainy. Uh, but since this is a 4K webcam and we're recording in 1080p, you can see it is a little grainy even when it's all the way zoomed out just because it is a webcam. Uh, but if we do zoom in, we can zoom in to where it's just about, this is like the same as the C920 right now. So here's C920 and here's the Brio zoomed in. C920 at full resolution, Brio zoomed in and it still looks better. Um, so that's actually, I yeah, the lighting is better. I don't know how much you can tell. Hopefully you can tell, like, look how dark it is at the bottom of my shirt and, you know, look at the, the color of the green screen back there. The green screen's a bit more green on the Brio. Um, yeah, you can see the C920 has some issues with the screws in the back of the game show wheel here. Uh, whereas the Brio, you can see those screws a little better. Like I said, it, it handles contrast better. I don't think it's technically HDR, high dynamic range, but it does handle contrast and lighting better. If I turn on this lamp behind me again. All right, so I just turned on a lamp behind me. We're starting to lose our focus again on the Brio. Just as a note, let me see, do I have manual focus? Here, I've got manual focus on the Brio. Um, so here is zoomed, I guess, all the way, or focused all the way in. And then we can, all right, this is the farthest away focus you can do on the Brio manually. And it looks like the farthest away focus works, even if I'm pretty darn far away. So that's fine. Um, yeah, if the, if the autofocus continues to be an issue, I might just disable focus, or disable autofocus for the extra life stream. But let me go to my C920 right now. All right, you see the light coming from up there. See how it's really washing out 
all of this green screen up in this top corner. Whereas the Brio, I can actually come into the Brio and let's zoom all the way back out. Look at that. Wow. You can still see my face. I actually want to tilt this up just to check. Wow, look at that. You can see the light up there. Obviously, that's way too bright. That shouldn't be in the camera shot, but you can still see me fairly fine. Whereas if we go to the C920, let's tilt this thing up. This is the cheaper, older webcam. Okay, that's actually handling it better than I thought it would, the C920. But, uh, but you can see the Brio. The C920 up there, it, it's just white. Like, you can barely see the outline of the lamp head there. Whereas we go to the Brio, and you can see it way more clearly, what's going on in that super bright space. See the difference? This is the old one, and here's the new one. So yeah, I'm very, uh, I'm impressed with this so far. Like I said, I looked it up online, I knew it was going to be an upgrade. I'm going to tilt this down a bit. Stands a pain to deal with. All right, wow, that, that looks really good for a webcam. Normally, I'm not a fan of webcams anymore since I've got my Lumix, but this thing actually does look really nice. And another thing I just did want to note, in OBS, um, the software I'm using to do this, Open Broadcaster software, normally when I'm using Logitech webcams, uh, this is my C920, and if I set the video format to YUYV422, which is the default, um... Well, I just broke that camera there. So let me try and bring that back in. Okay, uh, I've got it again. So if we come into here and we change this video format. Okay, it doesn't like me when I change the, the video format. Let me just switch back to the Brio here. Normally in OBS, I have to set the color format to emulated mode in order to get the full resolution and frame rate available on Linux. Um, it starts out by default on YUYV422, and then I have to change it normally. Normally, I have to change that color mode to YU12 in order to get 30 FPS and 1080p on the old webcams, uh, such as the C920. I had to change the color mode to a, an emulated one, which I don't actually know entirely what that's doing, but that's just always how it's worked on Linux with OBS. The Brio, however... This is not the emulated color mode. This is the, the straight up YUVV422 color mode. I can do up to 30 FPS 1080p on this thing with this color mode. Now it does not let me go to 4K with this color mode. For that, I have to change it to the emulated. And I have just gone ahead and switched this to 4K. Now this video is still gonna be in 1080p. I could have made this entire video in 4K. My Lumix records 4K. I didn't think that far ahead. Most of my videos are in 1080p anyway, so I wasn't even thinking about it, but I can downscale this manually to 1080p somewhere here. Here we go. Uh, so now we're recording using the emulated color 4K downscaled to 1080p. It seems a little more choppy. Um, doesn't seem quite as smooth. Um, you know, webcams are going to be webcams anyway. It's never going to be perfect like a real camera. This is apparently 30 FPS. And then uh, this thing does do, well, all these problems are being caused by OBS and Linux, not the uh, cameras necessarily. But yeah, this camera also does up to 90 FPS at 720p, I think. Um, it definitely does up to 60. I think it goes up to 90 if you go to a certain resolution. I don't see it written anywhere on the box offhand. Uh, but yeah, this is the Brio. Like I said, I'm very impressed with it. It seems like these cameras do kind of degrade in quality over time. I mean, seriously, there was a point in time when I was using my C525 here. This was like my main camera for Nerd of the Street videos uh, for a little while, and I don't remember it looking this bad. I don't know if any kind of hardware degradation has occurred or if it's just because it's gotten knocked around so much over the years being, you know, brought back and forth between different places. Uh, but yeah, this is the C525. Here's the C920. And then here is the Brio. The Brio definitely looks the best out of the three of them. I'm glad I've gotten this thing. The contrast thing with the lights that I was talking about, the reason I care about that is because our stage at Extra Life has a ton of lighting on it. So last year, uh, the C920 was getting super blown out. But this year, this should be a bit better with the, the Brio. But yeah, that is uh, everything for this video. Here's just a little sample for you guys. Once again, I know I'm just recording at 1080p, but you can definitely tell the difference in quality even at 1080p. So I am excited that I've got this Brio now. And yeah, that's just about the only equipment I actually had to purchase for Extra Life this year, aside from the 
game show wheel and a little bit of beef jerky. If you guys want to see everything that we're doing for our Extra Life stream next weekend, you can tune in starting Saturday, November 3rd at 6.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time. We will be streaming for 27 hours and ending our stream at 8.30 a.m. CST the next day. That live stream is raising money for the St. Louis Children's Hospital, and you can go to extralife.knots.co to read more about that. I also want to give a quick thank you to my Nerd Club members for making equipment like this possible. This is the kind of thing that we use those funds for, Nerd on the Street funds. And with that, that's everything I had to show you guys today. So let me know if you guys have any questions about this camera down in the comments below or at the forums at nerdonthestreet.com. I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm the Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.